Hello friends, I hope you are well. Techman Pat here. Today we're looking at the latest DDR Pro memory modules from Crucial. And I know what you're about to say. Pat, you can't. This review of RAM isn't going to work. How the hell can you review these modules fairly? You can't test it on every motherboard out there and every other CPU and the combination thereafter. Everyone is going to have different results. And if you said that, you would be absolutely right. And so that's not what we're going to do today. In this video, we're going to test the performance differences between 16, 32, 48, and 64 gigs of RAM. Ultimately, I aim to help you in deciding how much RAM you really need for gaming on Windows 11. And just for kicks, I threw in an 8 gig stick in there to compare to the rest of these. Now, if you want a key takeaway and you want to stop watching right now, you need at least 16 gigs of RAM for Windows 11 gaming. So make sure you like this video and subscribe before you go. But if you want to know more and you want to see the results of these, then stick around. First of all, big thanks to Crucial for sending their 64 gig DDR4 Pro pack for review. Check out the links below on where you can purchase them. And then secondly, let's get started by rolling the intro. Let's kick off with the specifications of these modules. Each stick is 16 gigs of RAM, with a total of four giving you 64 gigs of RAM. At 3200 mega transfers with XMP 2.0 on Intel and AMD's equivalent, a latency of 22, these modules are on the higher end of performance, but are priced really, really well, around $70 for the 32 pack of two 16s. They have a low profile, a black cooling shroud, no RGB, and you know what? It doesn't really matter. And honestly, they look quite nice for a stealthy or enclosed build where you're not looking at these day in, day out. Before we go into the results, I want to discuss the meaning of mega transfers and latency, paving the way for our understanding of CAS latency, that's one S. Now, mega transfers per second, also known as frequency, indicates the number of times the data can be transferred per second, and therefore the larger the value, the higher the number of transfers per second. That's pretty clear. And it also means it is more efficient on the transfers. Now, CAS latency, which is generally referred to the timing, represents the time taken by the memory module to transfer the data after receiving the command. The smaller the value, the shorter the time spent, and the faster the data can be transferred. There is an ultimate one there, which is called pure latency, and we'll get to that in a second. Now, if you read more into the topic, the performance of memory cannot be determined by a single value. Keep that in mind. The frequency and timing are closely related. Timing is usually expressed as four values, such as CL40, 40, 40, 40, 80. Now, the values represent in order of cast latency, row address to column address delay, TRCD, then row precharge time, TRP, and row active time, TRAS. You need to remember that the most common value we use is the CAS latency, which is commonly heard as CL. And you can ignore most timings because that only impacts professional overclockers rather than pure gamers. So how do you use these two numbers to choose the right RAM module for your situation? Well, the answer eh, is a little bit complex. Unfortunately, we have been led to believe to only look at the CL, that a higher CL means lower lower performance due to the longer delay time, which is technically true, but not the whole truth. Using the formula, we can work out the actual latency in milliseconds by inputting both the mega transfers and CL. But note that a lower CL with a higher mega transfer can provide similar results, meaning you can't use CL as the only indicator of performance. Now you can ignore this formula because we can demonstrate it better than just working it out by hand. We are in the age of chat GPT. We'll use this website instead as a calculator because it's easier and quicker. Now the Crucial Pros at a mega transfers of 3200 and a CL of 22 gets a latency of 13.75 nanoseconds. And remember, that's nanoseconds. So the performance of the memory is affected by both the frequency and timings. So the CL in the memory cannot be used to define the performance of memory alone, and you need to look at both numbers. Lastly, remember to put dual or quad modules in the appropriate AA or BB slots to maximize performance. Some people tend to go 
one next to each other, but you need to make sure they're in the right slots. So I hope this has helped you to decide how to pick RAM modules. Now on to the benchmarks. We will be looking at the performance between each memory module and the differences in performance between each combination. You can ignore the total numbers because the performance may vary due to many factors. So let's start with gaming. The jump between 8 gigs and 16 gigs of RAM across all these games is massive, especially on Windows 11, which is a ridiculously weird RAM hog. Windows 10 users will see potentially a smaller jump between 8 and 16. The other thing to point out is the combination of 48 gigs of RAM, which is actually three sticks and yes, first of all, it is uneven, which means there are two in dual mode and then there is a single. And as you can see from these results, the blue being the 48 gig modules, two and one, has a lower result than the rest. Basically what I'm saying here is don't use three modules, go either two or four. Now, onto 3D Mark benchmarks. They seem to have a fairly well scalable results as we add more modules, except the Time Spy Outlier score with 64 gigs of RAM yielding a big jump. I would call that an anomaly, but I wanted to share that with you. In the IDA 64 series benchmarking results, we see a jump in performance between 16 gigs and 32. But beyond that, the difference is generally close to the average of each run. Specifically, the IDA 64 memory latency benchmark showed that it really did didn't like the 48 RAM again, and it could be due to that slot arrangement as mentioned before. The IDA64 read benchmarks, we saw a massive jump between the single 16 gig stick and the two, almost doubling in performance. And beyond that, it scaled very well as long as it was dual or quad arrangement. So what's the summary here? Well, you need at least 16 gigs of RAM, which is great from a performance to cost ratio. If you want to make sure you hit all the benchmarks, then 32 in two modules or 64 in four modules is kind of the way to go. But even then, unless you're doing specialized work that requires more RAM, for example, 3D modeling or CAD work, then you don't really need more as the cost will not yield a big difference in gaming. So friends, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video helped you. Make sure to like it if it did and subscribe if you want to support us and see more content like this. Big thanks to Crucial for sending me these modules for review. And of course, check out the links below where you can buy these for your own computer. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think below. If there's any other suggestions of tests I can do with these, do let me know there. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.